Hey there, welcome to Board Game Barrister, our local game shop in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'm Andy, and I'm here with Ian, Glenn, and Gordon, and today we're talking hidden leaders from BFF Games. It is a hidden information and strategy game. The emperor of our kingdom has died. We are the emperor's children, so we're all vying to become the new emperor. Let's get into it. Welcome to Hidden Leaders, a game where there are four factions vying for power in the wake of the Emperor's death. We have the Waterfolk coming in from out past the harbor, the Imperial Army and the Hill Tribes are competing within the kingdom itself, and then there's always the undead presence that threatens us from beyond the grave. And at the beginning of the game, each player is randomly going to get one of the six leaders in the game. Each of these leaders supports two of the factions, so they want to make sure that one of their two factions has control in the end. So there are two main things we're going to be looking at throughout the game, the first of which is these Imperial Army and Hill Tribe tokens. These tokens determine, at the end of the game, which of the factions has control. So the first thing we're going to check for is an undead victory, because the undead's win condition trumps all of the other factions' win conditions. If both of these tokens happen to be in these dark spots between the numbers 9 and 12 at the end of the game, the undead win it. The merfolk are just looking to have both of these tokens either on the same spot on this track or one spot away from each other on this track, so they want to keep both of the kingdom's factions as close in power as possible. And the imperial army and hill tribes both work the same way, they just want to be at least two spots ahead of the other one at the end of the game, but again, they don't both want to be in the undead area because that would mean the undead win. So the gameplay itself revolves around these hero cards. I've got three available in the tavern for players to pick up at the moment. Each player will also always have a hand of three hero cards at the start of their turn. Each card has a few different elements. My Slaughtered Slime here is an undead card, so that counts as an undead faction card for the player who plays it into their party. Many cards will also have an effect on the tokens, so this one allows me to either move the Imperial Army or the Hilt Tribes back one spot on the track. And it's got an ability. Burying any face down card, which is what this token means here, means I get to pick any face down card in a player's party that could be mine or another player's, and I get to send it over to the graveyard here. Now you get to play one card on your turn, and when you do so, it goes immediately face up into your party, and then you do all of the abilities stated on that card. As the game goes on and we're playing more cards and using their abilities, affecting the tokens out on the board, we're going to be adding cards face up into our party, but also face down into our party. And the game is going to end when a player hits a certain number of face-up cards in their party. That's going to be dependent on the number of players. So we played with four players today, which means the first player to have seven cards in front of them ends the game immediately. When the game ends, we're going to go and we're going to check which faction won. So in this case, if the tokens were still where they were, this would mean that the Hill Tribes win the game. And we're going to see which leaders at the table support the Hill Tribes. In this case, if there was only one player supporting the Hill Tribes, that player wins the game immediately. But if there do happen to be multiple leaders who support the winning faction, then we're going to come down to a tiebreaker. And this is where what you've been adding to your party of heroes matters throughout the entire game. Because at this point, all the leaders with the winning faction on their card are going to flip over their face down cards, tally up the total number of cards in that faction that they collected into their party, and that is their tiebreaker score. So whoever collected more wins the game in the end. All right, so we played our game with four players today, which was incredible. The game plays from two all the way up to six. Two feels like it's going to be a really specific experience, and I don't know that I would suggest that for your first time playing, because it might just be a very different experience than the game was kind of built around. The game is built around having all of this hidden information, potentially having allies among the other people at the table who are working on the same objectives as you are, but at the same time, you still have only one winner at the end, so you're trying to be that one person who, if the undead win, I want to be the best at the undead. And the game box says it takes 30 minutes to play. After our first game of this, I believe we'd play another one in 30 minutes. It was 45 minutes for our first time through, so that feels great. The most exciting thing for me in this game is, uh, you know, the cards themselves all have special abilities that they do, and they're all unique. Uh, each one of the cards has its own special ability that I didn't see any duplicates of any of the cards that we played in the game. Some cards let you play cards from other people's boards. Some cards let you play cards from the open drafting area. Some cards let you play other stuff from your hand. All kinds of different places you could interact with the board, which, uh, you know, I play a lot of card games and that was really interesting for me to kind of min-max what I wanted to do with the cards that I had available in my hand. Yeah, the combination of a cheeky name on every single unique card with a pretty impactful unique ability it was just yeah. like every time we saw a new one we were like, what does the nightmarish yeah. Northman do? He looks crazy! And then yeah. each of them has its own special ability, so there's this really good sense of discovery for every single card in this game. And also, there are so many good abilities that often you will be wanting to play cards 
that don't help you towards your end game. Mm -hmm. At least not directly in your point scoring at the end, but mm -hmm. they help you in different ways. It gives you a lot more options mm -hmm. than just very specific, oh, I'm red blue, I'm just gonna play red blue and that's all I'm gonna play. Yeah. yeah. And while we said that everything on the cards is unique and there's lots of stuff here, it's not hard, it's not complicated. The cards are really easy to figure mm -hmm. out what you're doing and the actions you're taking are conceptually straightforward, right? The iconography that they use is really straightforward. Mm -hmm. Like once you, when you first look at it, like, it's like what's going on here, but it locks into place. And so you have all of these things, they're all unique, it gives you lots of things to think about, and yet it's not brain burning. You're not yeah. trying to figure out, oh man, how is this complicated card working? No, it's yeah. just really easy to understand. The arrogant wow. skeleton, see him? Can do anything you want. arrogant. Uh, uh, and or, this is gonna show your true colors right <laughs> here. And or, <laughs> it says. Uh, <laughs> we're undead supporters. True Undead. Draw the lines. Oh my god. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> no way did that just happen. So there's a decision they made that I actually like in that, so you have your leader that you get at the start of the game that has the factions that you have. So I would win if I either red or blue, or I could potentially win if red or blue won out here. Mm -hmm. um, but I like the fact that they don't have any special abilities. Because in games like these, invariably, whether it is true or not, people will latch onto one and say, well, you had the best leader, that's why you won. And you can't do that in this because there's no best color. Yeah. It's just simply, I'm red-blue or I'm blue-green, whatever it is, and I like that they chose that. Yeah. They've made it so that there's six possible leaders. That means that each color is represented three times amongst all those leaders. We had all three red leaders in our game. It's the one that had the most representation, and red was not the faction that won it in the end. So that's a really interesting that happen thing that happens too, is when you see other people pushing one direction, you start to feel more competition for that, and you start to fall back on your other faction. So I think the duplicity, the, the double faction element that they put into this, might be the best design element they put into this game, was to say, you always have a second option for what you can try to do if the one option isn't going well and everybody else is going to be flailing to try to figure out what yeah. the heck you're working on the whole time as you do it. I really like that the first check we do at the end of the game is not a check who did good and who did bad, it's a check which faction did good and which faction did bad. So even if your faction didn't win, you look out there and you say, ah, there were a couple of us working on this faction and we didn't do it together, this faction didn't win. This is this removed thing from you. And then if multiple people are in the winning faction, then you have this moment where you're like, I'm on the winning faction. You did it better, you win the game in the end, but I was able to make the faction do it in the end. So they kind of leave everybody at the table without having to take away this, I, I lost. Something crushed me, I lost. There, there's this nice divide between you and your strategy that makes it so that there isn't this terrible feel bad at the end of the game. I mean, the first thing we did is we talked about our factions. Nobody cared that Glenn ended the game and won. All we did was, whoa, what happened? Let's see who was what faction. And we were all interested in figuring out what happened. And then we looked at, the first thing we discussed was that three of us were red and red wasn't winning. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a really cool kind of like, who won, who, who won was which faction won, not, oh, I ended the game this turn did I win? Yeah. You know, it was very much so, oh, let's see what everybody was doing kind of <laughs> yeah. a deal. Like it was like, yeah. I want to see what everybody did. This is neat yeah. kind of feeling that I think it felt almost not cooperative, but it felt like what, what were we actually vying for? And that flip over discovery moment was super interesting. All right, that does it for Hidden Leaders. We had a fantastic time with this one and we hope you had fun watching as well. As always, you can hit that like button, leave a comment if you got one, subscribe if you want to see our videos every week when we post them, and check out our online store where you can find Hidden Leaders and a bunch of other cool stuff. Thank you so much for joining us this week. We will see you next time.